I love that this young teenage girl had absolutely no identity crisis whatsoever. Unlike so many in our society have today. It's tremendously heartbreaking that today among our youth, among our young, there is definitely an identity crisis in our adolescence. Mary is unlike many of her peers and other adolescents whose studies say in 2015 that 37% of teens struggle with their identity. They do not know who they are. They don't know where they come from. They don't know their purpose in life. They're lost. 95% of teens reported that they have felt completely inferior at some point in their lives and wonder, what in the world am I doing here? They don't measure up to anybody. That's close to 100% back in 2015. With this study being more than six years old, I'm sure that this 37% struggling with not knowing who they are is much, much higher today. In fact, I just heard on the news yesterday that during the pandemic, suicide among our young girls has increased by 50%. That's heartbreaking. Because our youth, our young, don't know who they are. They have an identity crisis. How terribly sad to know that they're walking around today not knowing who they are, trying to figure it out, not knowing their purpose or what they're supposed to do with their life, and not knowing that they were created in the image of God. And he knew them while they were in their mother's womb. Who's telling them these things? We should be speaking this to the youth of America, that you were created for a purpose. You are known amongst God, that he knows the plans he has for them, that he sent his one and only son to die just for them. We need to be praying for the youth in our country that they will come to know Jesus at a young age and give them hope. Let me speak to the parents for just a minute. Let me encourage you to fulfill your responsibility that is spoken to you in Proverbs 22, 6. That says to train up a child in the way that he should go and when he gets older, he will not depart from it. You have a responsibility to teach your children in the ways of the Lord. That falls on you. Teach them how to walk with God using the word of God as their standard of truth that they know absolutely the difference between wrong and right. Teach them how to pray at a young age. Doug and I did this with our children at the age of two, three, or four. We would ask them, say your prayers, bless mommy, bless daddy, you know how that goes. But the reason behind that was we were teaching them how to pray. Live out your faith before your children. Let them see how you walk with God, how you face uncertainties with God. Let them watch you. Vision is caught, not taught. They will learn as they watch you walk with God. The number one way you can destroy your children is to come to church and live one way and go home and live another way. You are doing your children no service whatsoever. You have to teach them by showing them how to walk with God. Do daily devotions with them or weekly devotions, age-appropriate devotions. We did this with our kids every morning before they went to school so they got the word of God in them before they went to school. It takes time and commitment, but it's what Proverbs 22, 6 says, to teach them. And when we do this, we're breathing hope inside of our, our children and that they grow up with purpose and knowing that they belong to God. Bring them to church. Let them know that church is important. We go to church every Sunday. 
Live that out with them. Doug and I raised our children in church every Sunday morning. They were there for three services. We went back Sunday night and we were at every Wednesday night service and it did not kill my kids. In fact, I would venture to say it has made who they are today as strong, strong adult Christian kids.